A mysterious death of a top Chinese official could spark a doom spiral for the Chinese Communist Party. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. As you probably know, China's former premier, Li Keqiang, is dead. And that's why I like talking to the China Uncensored audience. I can assume you know about Li Keqiang, instead of whomever is Taylor Swift's latest boyfriend. It's Travis Kelsey, by the way. I can be super into China and the Swifty too, can't I? But I love Xinhua's obituary for Li Keqiang. Reading communist state-run media is always a trip. It praises Li as a time-tested and loyal communist soldier. But come on, Xi Jinping is in charge. Gotta talk about the dear leader in some other guy's obituary. Li was able to do all those great things under the strong leadership of Party Central with comrade Xi Jinping at the core. And did you know, after Li retired, he still continued to uphold the leadership of the Party Central with comrade Xi Jinping at the core? So I know you're probably all deeply grieving the loss of Li Keqiang, but don't worry. You can turn grief into strength by rallying more closely around Party Central with comrade Xi Jinping at the core. Well, I feel better already. But Li Keqiang's death isn't just a passing blip. This has major ramifications for the Chinese Communist Party. Because a lot of people think he was assassinated. I'll tell you more after the break. Welcome back. Was Li Keqiang assassinated? That's what a lot of people are saying. Li was part of what's called the Youth League faction. Basically, these are communist officials who are not descended from the party's revolutionary founders, unlike Xi Jinping, whose father fought in the communist revolution. In other words, they're not the nobility of China's great classless communist system. Li's death was suspicious. He was only 68 when he suffered from a sudden heart attack. Now, top communist officials receive the best health care imaginable. Not to mention as many organs as they want, since China literally has people in prison camps to use as a limitless organ bank for the elite. This post was written by a well-known Taiwanese cardiologist, and it casts doubt on the heart attack story. There are two common reasons for a sudden death from heart problems. One is an obstruction of a coronary artery leading to a massive heart attack. The other is severe arrhythmia leading to a heart attack. And the cardiologist says both of those are highly unlikely given the kind of care Li Keqiang would be getting. So, was he killed? And if so, who done it? I know what you're thinking. Sudden heart attack? Gotta be Fox die. But a lot of China commentators are saying it was Xi Jinping. There's been this long running idea that there was discord between Xi and Li. That Li was a reformer sidelined by Xi. They point to things like Li Keqiang saying 600 million Chinese people were making less than 1,000 yuan a month. That's about $136 a month. He said that around the same time Xi Jinping was saying he eliminated extreme poverty. Li also talked about the damage to China's economy being caused by zero COVID, something Xi threw his whole weight behind. And he's got a lot of weight. And now, the party is heavily censoring any mourning for Li. Comments about it on Chinese social media are being deleted, and Chinese universities have been banning public mourning for him. This isn't the first time there's been suspicious deaths by heart attacks either. There was Xu Ming, a businessman tied to Xi's rivals who died of a sudden heart attack while he was in prison. He was 44. As Xi Jinping was cracking down on China's financial sector, Xie Jirkun, founder of Zhongzhi Enterprise, also died of a sudden heart attack at 61 years of age. Now obviously there's no proof that they, or Li Keqiang for that matter, were assassinated. But that was the speculation for all of them, because this has happened before. It's pretty common for CCP leaders to purge their second-in-command. Mao Zedong suppressed his right-hand man, Zhou Enlai even preventing doctors from telling Zhou that he had bladder cancer so he wouldn't get treatment. Not to mention, Mao took action that led to the deaths of his other close associates, Liu Shaoqi and Lin Biao. Deng Xiaoping purged his right-hand men, Hu Yaobang and Zhao Ziyang. Deng even almost removed Jiang Zemin. Oh, if only he had. And Jiang suppressed his premier, Zhu Rongji. 
communist parties are pretty cutthroat. So you can see why some would suspect there was foul play with Lee's death, and that she may have played a role. But I think that's unlikely, and here's why. Lee wasn't a threat to Xi. As I said earlier, Lee is part of the Youth League faction, basically a commoner. He wouldn't be able to form a true clique against Xi because China's red aristocracy would never follow him. If anything, Li and Xi were allies. Li was the protege of former Chinese leader Hu Jintao, and like Xi, he was in a life-or-death power struggle with the Chinese leader before him, Jiang Zemin. Now maybe you're thinking, well, didn't Xi purge Hu Jintao? I actually don't think he did. That's too big a story to go into here, but you can check out this episode for a full breakdown. I'll put a link down below too. So, as Sino Insider, a risk consultancy that specializes in elite Chinese politics, puts it, Xi and Li are political allies against the Jiang Zemin faction, and both still have incentives to stick together because the Jiang faction, while considerably weakened, is still a serious political force. So because Li didn't have the clout to lead a faction against Xi, and because he was the enemy of the Jiang faction, the most powerful clique actually opposed to Xi, he wasn't a threat to Xi. And so I think it's highly unlikely Xi had him killed. So does that mean Li really did die of natural causes? Oh no, 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 no. There's another possibility, one that could spell doom for the Communist Party. I'll tell you more after this final commercial break. Welcome back. So if a natural death for Li Keqiang is a bit sus, and Xi Jinping didn't do it, who might? As I mentioned in this episode, I believe actions taken by Xi Jinping show he's terrified of getting assassinated. The Jiang Zemin faction is still active, led by Jiang's right-hand man, Zheng Qinghong. Could they have taken out Li after failing to get Xi, and push the narrative that Xi did it? That would be devastating propaganda against Xi. It plays into the idea of a power-mad dictator who will go after anyone, even his allies. So maybe everyone should turn on Xi and replace him with, oh, I don't know, someone from the Jiang faction who's into doing business again, and not all the warmongering Xi Jinping has been doing. However Li Keqiang died, his death will trigger an unprecedented era of political turmoil in China. Xi's enemies will use it to spread every kind of rumor imaginable to undermine and destroy Xi. It will feed into global paranoia about the Xi regime, which will only increase the economic and political crises facing China. Xi will be forced to respond to this information war with even more anti-corruption purges and censorship. To give you an idea of how paranoid Xi has become, he's changed the start of the Lunar New Year holiday. It usually falls on the eve of the first day of the new year. In Chinese, that's pronounced Chu Xi, which means Lunar New Year Eve. But it sounds like Chu Xi, which means eliminate Xi. Chinese is fun. What this practically means is we could be seeing Xi go after the big tigers, guys like Zheng Qinghong, the red aristocracy of the Communist Party that has been pretty much untouchable. And I'll be covering it all here on China Uncensored. But this show can't continue without your support. All it takes is a dollar or more per episode on patreon.com slash China Uncensored. And as a thank you, I'll answer your questions. Today's question comes from Fish Tacos. If I watch the ads on your videos instead of skipping, or do a survey for Google, does your channel get more ad revenue? That's a really important question for the show. So YouTube has different kinds of ads. Obviously the non-skippable ads are not skippable if you want to watch a video. They also generate the most revenue for YouTubers. For the skippable ads, here's what you need to do to make sure China Uncensored gets revenue. If the ad is over 30 seconds long, you need to watch 30 seconds of it. If it's less than 30 seconds, you need to watch the full thing. Or in both cases, you can click on the ad. But keep in mind the biggest part of China Uncensored's budget does not come from YouTube ad revenue, especially with all the demonetization. 
Most of our budget comes from viewers like you, Fish Tacos, who contribute on Patreon. So if you'd like to join Fish Tacos, click on that orange button. And click here for the latest Deep Thoughts While Gaming from my new gaming channel, where I talk about sensitive topics while gaming to hopefully get under YouTube censorship radar. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.